Hey guys, what's happening? Thanks for tuning in and coming back today. I appreciate it. And in this video, I'm going to talk about the 10 best filters in Luminar 2018. Now, the word best is obviously very subjective. These are the 10 that I use the most. These are kind of the 10 favorites. I call them the 10 best. But the truth is the list of filters that I use on a pretty much daily basis is probably about 20. So I had to make some hard cuts and that's hard to do. I mean, you know, the old uh, expressions like, you know, you can't pick your favorite child. You love them all equally kind of thing. Um, and while these aren't my children, um, man, it feels like it. I spend so much time with them. Um, but no, really, it's, uh, it's very difficult to do. And in fact, there's a quote I like about a lady who was getting interviewed many years ago, and she had a whole bunch of kids. And the interviewer said, how do you divide your love among all these children? She said, you don't divide your love. You multiply it. Um, that always stuck with me. Um, and I kind of feel that way about a lot of these filters. Now, there's 50 filters in Luminar, uh, at least Luminar 2018. Uh, there's 10 that I consider my favorites, which really means these are the ones that I use the most and probably on just about every image. Uh, but there's another 10 or so that I use pretty darn frequently, so I had to make some hard cuts. And these are some great filters like the vignette filter, which I love. And on a Mac, I know on a Windows it's a little bit different, so I, hopefully that'll be corrected. But I love to place center and use inner brightness on the vignette. Super awesome. Didn't make the cut for the top 10. Uh, dodge and burn. You know, selectively lighten or dark in different parts of the image didn't make the cut. Cross-processing, I talked about in a recent video where I used it to enhance the colors of a sunset, didn't make the cut. So it was hard to do this, to be honest, but I did it, and uh, let's roll. Let's see what we got here. Okay, so the first one is develop. Hopefully, um, everybody's using this. I think it's a great filter, and it's not just the adjust tab, but I love the lens correction, right, where you can fix distortion or create distortion if you like. Um, super powerful, uh, especially for architecture and things like that. Uh, and then the transform tab where you can really literally move things around. And while I don't use either one of those on every photo, when I do uh, use them, I'm always like, wow, that's really cool. I'm so glad it's here. Um, you know, for uh, for the adjust tab, you know, I'd do something like this. And by the way, I'm not going to edit this photo with all 10 filters. I'm going to play around with some of the filters on this photo, but I won't... Uh, do a complete editing job, but you know, you can kind of do something like that and maybe warm that up a little bit more and give it a little bit more tint. Um, and you know, develop went from that to that. So, you know, a lot of capabilities. So I use develop a lot. Number two, accent AI. Hello, I'm done with my photo. Um, not really, but I mean, gosh, I love accent AI and I talked about that in a recent video, but it's super powerful. It's very intelligent. Uh, obviously that's what the AI stands for, artificial intelligence but it really figures out what you need to do and then it does it. Now, doesn't mean you always agree with it and that's okay. You can go custom mask that in because there are these little brushes that you can get on every filter. And so you can apply Accent AI and then say, well, I just wanna brush it into you know the center of the photo or whatever. And again, that's something I did on a recent video. So feel free to check that out. That's two. Okay, you knew saturation and vibrance was gonna be in here and that's just because I love my color. So I love to bump, uh, bump up saturation. But what I really love to bump up is uh, the vibrance. Um, so I'll often take uh, saturation maybe a tiny bit or maybe leave it, but bump up the vibrance quite a bit. And that's because the vibrance is going to give pop to the colors that aren't really the dominant colors. Saturation is just going to make everything kind of go boom. Um, it's a technical term. Uh, the vibrance is really going to help you with some of the non-primary or non-saturated colors. So you, again, quickly go from something like that to something like that. Um, and so I use that one a lot. Um, I'm kind of surprised saturation vibrance isn't built into the develop filter. It almost seems like it should be, but you know, hey, I don't make this stuff, I just use it. So uh, that's saturation of vibrance. Tone, if you're not using tone, I think literally you're missing out. And in fact, in the beginning, I didn't even use the develop or raw develop filter that much. I was mostly doing things in tone because there is a quite a bit of overlap, right? Exposure and contrast, they both got that. Highlight shadows, whites, blacks, they both have that. But where the develop filter has the temperature, tint, and clarity, you don't have that in tone, but you have smart tone. And I love smart tone. So if you wanna brighten this image, you can just kinda of drag it to the right. Um, you can adjust your contrast and that sort of thing. But smart tone, basically, if you drag it to the right to brighten an image, it'll brighten the stuff that's dark, but it's not gonna brighten the stuff that's already bright. And conversely, it's the same if you go to the left to darken the image, it'll darken the stuff that's bright without darkening that which is already dark. So it smartly tones your photo, right? You can kind of see how that works. I use Smart Tone um, pretty much all the time, uh, maybe every single photo. In fact, I use it more than Accent AI um, simply because I like fiddling with filters 
and Accent AI seems to do a little bit more. There's not a formula for what Accent AI covers, but uh, it seems to impact color and things like that as well. And in the tone filter, I like to just adjust smart tone and contrast and then sort of balance those two. Um, so that's uh, that filter. The next one is structure. Um, in fact, I'm gonna add a little bit of AI here just to brighten this photo a little bit. Um, I like structure a lot because uh, it gives you a little bit of that crunchiness, uh, but it's it's also gives you the ability to create a, a, the opposite of crunchy, which is really smooth. And so to me, it's a very flexible filter. You've seen me do this before. Um, but like, so with structure, you might would come in and say, you know what I really wanna do is crunch up some of the details, but obviously it's applied globally in nature. So what I would do is come in here and brush and I would say, I wanna brush that in maybe at a lower opacity. So you can come in here and adjust that opacity. Say I wanna do 70% and then I just wanna brush in, you know, that crunchiness kind of in the center of the photo. And that's something I like to do. And that's simply because um, I don't want the whole thing crunchy and on a photo like this, I don't really care about this stuff so much on the side. Like I'm sort of driving the viewer into the photo, into that bridge. And this is uh, the Charles Bridge in Prague. I'm sort of driving the viewer into the photo that way. Um, and I, I want the details to be kind of crisp where hopefully their eye is going, which is kind of in the center of the photo and into the uh, tower there. I don't really want to create a lot of detail on the side. So over here where these statues are and that building, don't really care. This statue, I might would stop about there, but the stuff to the right of that, I think I'd skip. So that's one thing I like to do th with structure. Now, I'm just gonna reset all that. Um, the other thing, and I wanna clear my mask, so clear. Um, the other thing I do with structure is the opposite of that, and that is, you know, I wanna go really high on structure, I'm sorry, uh, go completely negative on structure, and then boost it up. And it just starts creating a smooth, kind of dreamy thing. And what I'll do there is then just go brush it into the sky as kind of a noise reduction kind of thing. And so you've seen me do that in videos before. Um, and so what I'll often do is stack the structure filter twice on an image, once to get the little bit of detail and pop in the center, you know, for example, in this case. Uh, and then the second time, I'll go mask it in uh, negative structure with the boost to create that dreamy soft uh, feeling and I'll go mask it into the sky. So that's why I love structure so much. Super flexible and, uh, you know, a lot of fun. Okay, brilliance and warmth. All right, here we go. Uh, vividness, I love that. I mean, just like, boom, I, I love color. So, uh, you know, this is clear. Um, and then you can warm it up. Uh, I mean, look at that. It's like I went from that to that with two little sliders. So brilliance and warmth to me is actually almost better than saturation and vibrance. Uh, it just depends on what you're trying to do to a photo. I'll use a lot of, uh, I'll use them both often on the same photo. And, and again, for me, it's all about experimenting with color and thing like th things like that, where I'm kind of bouncing between filter to filter to get the exact look that I want. Anyway, brilliance and warmth is brilliant, um, and, and I love it. So that's something I use a lot of. Golden hour is the next one, right? So it, it's hard to beat having an automatic, you know, uh, warmth and kind of saturation kind of thing going on with your photos if you're trying to create a look like that. I love that, right? Before and after with, it's actually two sliders. I've still got X and AI in there, so I'll, I'll tone that down. Um, golden hour, but I mean, you know, you can see that I went from that to that. So I went from pretty much a blue hour-ish kind of look, which was, this was a sunrise, to now it's, it's really more golden, right? The sun has basically risen and I'm warming up the scene. I think it looks great. I'm a huge fan. Um, I'm actually going to put the AI back on it because the truth is, other than uh, some of my recent videos where I use maybe two or three filters, I'm usually using five, seven filters, that sort of thing. Um, you know, less is more, as I said in a recent video, but sometimes it's just fun to stack a bunch of filters on there and go crazy. Uh, okay, split toning. We're getting close to the end here. Split toning, I absolutely adore. I've used it for years in Lightroom. And um, I was so happy when I first got Luminar and they had split toning because it allows you to take the highlights and stick a color uh, and a tone and a saturation amount on the highlights and then do the same with the shadows and you can pick the colors independently. So in this case, um, I might pick like a kind of a orangey kind of hue for this guy. Uh, maybe a little bit more red, there we go. So it's probably a little too much. Anyway, this isn't a tutorial on split toning, but you can pick a color or hue and then just drag the saturation for the highlights and then you can do the same thing for the shadows. Might, I might go a little bluer here and create kind of a bi-color toning which by the way bi-color toning is a different filter. Now it, it operates a little differently than split toning but it's something um, 
that I would use split toning instead of bicolor toning simply because I like the look of split toning better. But anyway, um, I would couple split toning with other things like maybe Golden Hour or Brilliance and Warmth. And I've got AI on here already. It needs some tone adjustments, that sort of thing. So again, this is not watch Jim stick one filter and make the photo amazing. This is me just going through my, my top 10. Um, so split toning, super fabulous. Uh, you can change the balance between shadows and highlights. So if you like more of the shadows color, you go that way. Highlights color, you go that way. And amount is basically an opacity slider. So uh, zero is zero and 100 is all of it. So you can decide where you want to go in between those. Um, I generally just uh, make adjustments to the hue and the saturation to get it to my liking. And then I'm, uh, I, I kind of don't use the amount slider or the balance that much. But you can. Okay, color balance, uh, filter number nine here. Now, I've done videos about color balance. I like it so much. Um, it's pretty high on my list of favorite filters. And to be clear, these are not in a, uh, a, uh, a particular order other than I think they're in the order in which I pulled them from the filter menu. So um, color balance is awesome. And that's just, I love color. So um, it allows me to do a lot of things that I can't really do otherwise. So as you can see here, you have shadows, midtones, and highlights. And as you click on them, you can go into any of those and drag your colors accordingly. So um, if you've ever seen a color wheel, and if not, I recommend that you look that up. And as I said, I've got a color balance video I'll stick up here for you to check out. But color balance allows you to just choose colors based on shadows, uh, midtones, and highlights, and then adjust them accordingly. So, and I'm totally riffing here. I don't know what I'm gonna do. I didn't have a plan uh, with this, but let's say in the shadows, I might go a little bit bluer. Let's just say something like that. Um, and in the highlights, I might go a little warmer, kind of a little bit more red and yellow, you know, kind of, uh, maybe a little bit of magenta to create some of that look. Um, and from that to that, with just a couple of seconds of work, and that's just basic experimentation. For me, it's usually about creating um, the right look uh, in the highlights and the right look in the shadows. Um, it operates kind of similar to split toning in that you can separate highlights and shadows, but you have midtones as well. So great filter, a lot of flexibility, super fun for making really cool and interesting and beautiful color uh, effects, for lack of a better word, on your photo. So I use color balance all the time, simply adore it. Uh, and number 10, adjustable gradient. So um, some people use top and bottom lighting, but to me it doesn't do as, as much. Top and bottom lighting is literally just the lighting for the top or the bottom. Adjustable gradient has lighting, which is the exposure slider here, for top and bottom, but it also has these other things, contrast, vibrance, and warmth. So in this one, I might drop the exposure in the top, um, maybe I'll add a little contrast, but I want to pop up the vibrance and the warmth, right? Uh, in the bottom, maybe I'll lift the exposure just to make it a little bit brighter, add a little bit of contrast, bump up that vibrance and warmth as well. Um, and again, I'm just kind of riffing. Uh, you can set orientation, so you can say, well, Jim, that's not really the top and the bottom. You can kind of do it however you like. You can also rotate and you can collapse the, uh, the zone, right? The gradient zone between the top and the bottom. And again, just kind of riffing here, but you can quickly make an impact on your photo. So there's your base photo, and there it is now. So that's my 10. Um, I love these filters. I'm just gonna reset that. Absolutely adore these filters. I use them all the time, uh, and, and it was hard to pick 10. I picked 10 because it's a nice round number. It fits on two hands, but uh, in reality, it's probably 20 that I, that I live and breathe, for lack of a better word, uh, on a daily basis. I hope this is helpful. Uh, you know, you guys have, uh, I've had a few of you over, over the over the last, I don't know, six months or so say, hey, what are your favorite filters? Uh, and I talk about some of my faves in, in the videos, uh, various videos, but I just wanted to talk about all my faves in one place. So that's my top 10. I hope it's helpful. Let me know if you have any questions. Leave a comment, subscribe, like, share, all that stuff. Thanks for watching. I'm gonna get some water because I'm kind of hoarse. Have a good day. Thanks for watching. Take care and adios.